We're going to call this meeting of the Camden Zoning Board of Appeals to order June 13th, 2019. Uh, we have four members here of the zoning board, so that's under five, so that means uh, we have a tie vote denies the application if it's, if it's a, three votes must be in the affirmative so you have to just make sure you guys are okay with that as the applicant yes okay so um and then as a quick outline here we'll we'll ask about conflict of interest <coughs> everybody on the board will be asked whether they have any conflict of interest in the case before them um we will have the rules of a public hearing. The code enforcement officer will summarize the application that we have. We'll establish standing of the applicant. Then we have the applicant's presentation with all their submissions. And we'll have questions of the applicants from the board, questions from the public and questions from the board and then if we have a second round of questions from the public if there's anything new to add we have final questions of the applicant to respond to the committee at a, in the public hearing setting and then after that we'll <coughs> close the public hearing and the board will deliberate and vote Start off here. Um, does any of the members on the board here have uh, any conflict of interest in the application we have before us? No. 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 Okay. Um, uh, I guess at this point we'll have Steve Wilson give us uh, a summary. Of the application yeah this is um, what they're referring to is the we refer to as red shed the only one that's left standing down there it's currently owned by Lyman Morse under Camden properties LLC uh, it's just for the record it's on tax map 120 lot 75 in the Harbor business district uh, we're here tonight to review their wishes to take down and reconstruct the building um, and we're here to look at whether it is a non-conforming re reconstruction or relocation. We have to assess both as this building could possibly be moved back. I find it unlikely, but it is a possibility. We have to look at that possibility to see if it is possible or it can be reconstructed directly on its own, within its own footprint. From here, there it will actually go on to the planning board for all of the other reviews as far as structure, site plan, they've got to go through that review prior to getting building permits. Okay. Yeah. Okay, yeah. Then, so, um, okay, so the, the rules of procedure here is the next, the next thing is the the app will be establishing the standing of the applicant. The applicant will make their presentation, and after the presentation of the applicant, the board will ask questions of the applicant. The chairman will call for proponents and opponents. The chairman will call for audience comments. The public will, after those comments are made and everyone has had a chance to make one, the public hearing will be closed. The board will deliberate. After the public hearing is closed, the board through the chair may ask clarifying questions of the applicant. This is not intended to open up dialogue, but strictly to ask clarifying questions. The chair reserves the right to limit public comment to remarks that are pertinent to the point and not redundant. Um, okay, so. 
guess the next uh, the next item here would be for the the applicant to show standing, and I believe they have submitted. Yep, we've got a copy of the deed. Copy of the deed. Are these are these submissions all in the record, Jeannie, or do we need to? You can enter them in as a packet, the application packet, okay. dated May 29th, and enter it as one. So we can just make a motion that they've, they've proved standing. Yep, basically it's just something that we, we could get a motion and a motion that they have yeah, yeah. yeah. standing. Do you want to, do we want to make it? I just said. Right, okay. I just said. They, okay, so made a motion. The motion has been made that the applicant has shown standing. It's been seconded. Right. All those in favor? Motion is passed. Uh, so do we do we want to enter this submission list um, that was submitted by Gartley and Dorsky dated May 29th, 2019? Um, I'm not going to read through it. We're just going to add this to the record. So moved. Seconded. Second. Second. All right. Any more discussion on the submission list? Those in favor of it? So the the next thing is for the applicant to make their presentation, and I assume that's you, Will. Sure. I'm Will Gartley with Gartley and Dorsky, and uh, Drew and Cabot Lyman are with me tonight from Lyman Morse. And so we're here because they wish to um, rebuild the uh, the red barn building at the head of the harbor. The footprint's actually going to be slightly decreased. Um, and we fall under section, Article 6, nonconformance, section, section 6, changes in nonconforming structures in shoreland areas. Um, the first article under, I mean, the first number one under section 6 is expansion. So that's not applicable. We're not looking to expand. Um, the second one is foundations, and we are looking to put a new foundation under this building. It's going to probably be a combination of retaining and um, foundation, concrete foundation walls and piles. Um, the portion that's out over the, out beyond the highest angle <coughs> tide will all be piles to minimize the impact. Um, that's what's supporting it now. And um, that portion of the project will require a permit from the DEP and the Army Corps. So once we get past the ZBA, that would be our next step along with Planning Board. Um, with regards to the foundation, any time that we're putting a foundation under a building that's uh, nonconforming, then we need to show that we're meeting the setbacks to the greatest practical extent. That's the big reason we're here. That's the same reasoning under relocation number three. And so we feel like this site is, is we don't have a lot of options here. I mean, we have a pretty significant granite retaining wall that supports uh, Atlantic Avenue, and um, we really need room to be able to get in and around the building. Uh, moving it back closer to that, we, we could potentially be undermining that wall, so we, we prefer not to do too much digging too close to that wall. Uh, parking is a premium. Uh, we need parking for this facility. There's parking for Unit 1 of Harborhead uh, LLC, and the parking also is utilized by the marina. So all of those uh, re are dependent on that parking at different times of the day and different times of the week. But um, losing any of that would, would be a problem for all of the uses. We also have utility lines there. There's an um, uh, easement that the town has. You can see the sewer line that we're showing coming through the property. Um, that's the kind of um, brownish, orangish line that has S's in the breaks in the line, and then there's circles with an S in them. Those are the manholes. So the town has an easement through the property for that sewer. So you can't impact that. And then um, there's also underground power coming from a pole that's right above where the, M is, the A and the M are in Camden Properties LLC label. There's a utility pole there. It comes in overhead from Atlantic to that pole and then goes underground um, out to the marina. So it's just a, a tight site. The parking 
Um, if we lost any of that pavement, then we wouldn't have room to drive down and, and pull into those parking spaces. Um, so we have looked at trying to maneuver this a little differently, but really um, could not come up with something that, uh, that worked. So we're not expanding. We are reducing it. Um, but we also need to maintain emergency vehicle access down into there. And, um, you know, the grades are pretty steep. The drive coming down that drive is greater than 10% now. And moving it up would also raise the elevation. So we have a little bit of a height issue there. The building already exceeds the height limit. And so we have to maintain what we have now. We're grandfathered for that height, but we can't raise it. So moving it back would be moving it uphill. So there's a lot of constraints to the, to the property. So, um, but the building's been there for a long time. The ordinance clearly does allow it to be torn down and rebuilt. We just need to go through this process of looking at options of can we move it back um, further from the water. And I think it's pretty clear from the plan and the, and the, site, and the site constraints that there's really nowhere for us to go. The um, number four talks about nonconforming structure and uh, where you're going to destroy it by more than 50%. We're definitely doing that. So um, it really comes down to the same argument that we've made for number three with regards to moving it back. Um, changes after the approval, um, that's not what we're here for. We're, we're going to go through this process correctly and, and uh, try to capture everything we want to do now and uh, go through the planning board. The other item that is uh, uh, pertinent, though, is changes of use of a nonconforming structure. Um, so we are adding residential to the second floor. The first floor is going to main, still be uh, maritime and commercial use, but the second floor is going to be residential. So that is a change of use, um, but we don't see that as a, a negative to the site or the, the building or the property. So, I mean, we're in an area that's already a pretty mixed use. Most of the abutters to the property are residential. So that's it in a nutshell. Do you plan to rebuild that retaining wall that's on the inside of the building? <clears throat> yeah, right now there's a there's a there's kind of a strange scenario where there's a retaining wall and then a space mm -hmm. and then piles that support the building. And so that little space is is a problem. Mm -hmm. So we're we're moving the building um, to the east slightly so that we eliminate that little gap. And that's that side of the building, at least down to high water, will be a new retaining wall that's also going to potentially support the building. <coughs> concrete. Concrete. It's okay. probably going to be a concrete. And you said the roof line wouldn't be any higher than the existing? Nope. So it won't bother anybody's views or anything like that? No, we have, I mean, the roof line's not perfectly level, mm -hmm. but the, the max ridge is what we're held to because we are over the 24 feet. I think that, uh, I think I listed it somewhere. Oh, I know that on the elevations I have it, yeah. yeah. On the elevations we have it listed. Yeah. So does that ridge, does, is that ridge, it's, it just falls, basically sort of follows the contour of the, of the grade? A little bit, yeah. Yeah, yeah. yeah. so the whole building a, is not. It's not a level ridge. No. No, can't be. Right. Yeah. So we, we would like it to be a level ridge yeah. and a level floor. <laughs> no. <laughs> yes. Just, just as a point for the board's clarification, sure. zone, uh, residential use is an allowed use in that zone yeah. as long as it's not on the floor at street level. So if, as long as the residential use occupies the upper floor, it actually is, would be adding a conforming use to the building, not a non-conformance issue. Because it's allowed in that zone. Basically anything within 180 feet of Atlantic Avenue in which this whole building is within 180 feet. Now, I remember we had the issues with the uh, building heights with the topography. Does this fall into that? Remember we did that whole thing about four or five years ago with Baby Street and all that, too? So is that? This one, the way this actually lays out, this building actually does have a second floor that's above the grade of the parking lot. And where it doesn't, I, it was an issue with the American Boathouse. They had to do some tweaking there mm -hmm. just because the American Boathouse had a doorway onto Atlantic. 
even though it was only five foot. But where this one actually, the door is actually at the lower level and there would be a level above that. Okay. It wouldn't apply. Well, um, what changes, given that you're going to have residential on the second floor, what changes in terms of facilities or layout on the property would be required for that, if any? Um, really, it's just it's, it's parking. Whatever we have there for a use is going to require the parking according to the ordinance. Um, residential requires two spaces. For, is this a single family residence? Single family residence. But no more dumpsters will be required or anything else? No, actually, commercial uses require more of those types of things. The residential use is probably the least impactful that mm -hmm. we would have. So it's going gonna, it's gonna to basically take up two spaces out of, out of your pool of spaces right. for the residential. Yep. Are you increasing or decreasing any of those parking spaces? We're, we're going to work with this a little more, but no, we don't want to decrease. Yeah. If we could squeeze more out, we, we would. We could squeeze more in. Right. Right, yeah. Like everywhere in Camden, parking's premium. So, yeah. um, I mean, luckily the uses do kind of complement each other. You know, the, when the marina is the most used, it's on the weekends, and, and when the commercial piece of this and when the law office is being used is more during the week. So, luckily, there is a. They're not maxed out at the same time. Yeah. More people to ride motorcycles. Yeah. Smaller yeah. Time. I mean, it's walking distance. They should. <laughs> <laughs> so the existing commercial use, it, it's not an all day anyway. They drop off whatever and they're gone, right? Most of them. Right. 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 What kind of activity goes on or will go on? I'm just thinking there is a difference when you have a residence on the second floor. In terms of the first floor, what's yeah. going to go? So it's probably a lot of the similar ideas what we're doing now. Dinghy storage, was that, that whole space is filled with dinghies right now. Um, so probably that, we had the idea we're, we're out of room for the canvas shop. Potentially that might go down there um, from the other location. Uh, so that, that's kind of the idea. We're not 100% what's going to be in there, but that's kind of the general gist of what we do. And would the residents have a separate entrance? Yes. Yeah, yeah. Okay. Yes. Is yes. that on the drawing? Some, did I miss that on the elevations? Um, that is actually. I think the intent is that where you see those the the overhead doors on the uh, C and Atlantic Street East elevation. Yep. Either side of those that look like big windows. Yep. Those are doors. Doors. And those will go right up to the second floor? Well, one of them will go to the lower level space and one will, will go to a, a set of stairway. We're also talking about potentially trying to um, maybe add a garage space for that residence in the, uh, what is it, northerly end of the building. So we're still working on the, the exact layout. Safety for, pardon? Second, second exit for safety, fire and so forth? Yep. We will, um, in fact, I don't think I have the potential. We've got a bunch of different options for floor plans, but we clearly we need to meet all of the, you know, building codes. I mean, the town of Camden does have building codes, and then we've got um, life safety codes that we need to meet too. So we do have architects working on those portions of it, and those plans will be finalized and appropriate permits. Questions from the board? I have a, it's, a, it's another small question. It's about the existing vegetation because you talk in your plan about revegetating. Um, yep. And I can't tell. I mean, I often walk that way down C Street and I've never paid a whole lot of attention. But what kind of vegetation and what are you planning to put in? Yeah, there's not a lot of vegetation there right now. I mean, we you basically- You can see it in the photographs. Yeah, we've got a lot of, uh, well, let me look at the photograph to make sure I'm thinking of what you're talking about. But yeah, on, the, on this side of the building, 
clearly when we're doing construction that basically it's just grass until you get down close to high water and then once you're below high water there's some sea grasses. Those we're going to avoid impacting. But above high water, we're probably going to impact some of those in dem demolishing the existing building and reconstructing the new building just with equipment and that type of thing. So those areas down in here that are kind of just white on this plan will be revegetated. We haven't gotten into detail. We'll need to, though, for planning board purposes yeah, Because there's some outline in the ordinances. I'm sure you know about mm -hmm. things not to plant and oh, definitely. preferred yeah. things. Yeah. No. Okay. Um, so we'll, we'll call for uh, comments from the audience at this point. Yes? Could I ask for uh, clarification on the roof line? Oh, yeah. um, why don't you yeah, step up here and uh, let us know your name. Is that, does that need to be turned on? Yes, please. <coughs> there you go. Good evening, Mary Jo Brink. Could I ask for some clarification on the roof line? Um, I noticed that Mr. French mentioned about the houses that look um, beyond that for a view. And um, I understand the peak, the roof peak would remain the same. Um, the roof line right now is, is quite sloped and there are three houses on Atlantic that look through that slope for our views. And I know um, the intention is to raise that slope. Um, could we talk about what the raised um, outline would be? Yep, I mean, base, basically the, the roof line is still going to be a gable, similar to what it is now, and we're taking that ridge line at the Atlantic end and continuing it level the entire length of the building. So at what point of the building now would it be the same height? Is it in the middle or to the end? The portion that main... that's closest to Atlantic. So that would just maintain that all the rest of the way through. Right. So is that the 20, <coughs> 28 foot point That's nine the 28 six. point nine, right. That, so that's, is that essentially what you have there now with the existing building or? Right. Yeah. Right. And that, so. that 29 number is measured from the average original grade yeah. around every 10 feet around the perimeter of the building. So it's kind of a, it's a, it's a location that doesn't actually exist, right? It's, a, it's an average, average yeah. and so that's why we showed it on those elevations, just so you could see where it falls. So we're actually measuring from below the first floor of the building because of the fact that the ground drops away. And even out here, when you measure out around the building, you're, you're starting from a point that's below high water. So um, when you measure from the first floor, it's still only 20 four feet or something but Steve? Well, in response to her question yep would you expect that the views from those homes would change if the height of the roof isn't going to be any different well what she's saying though is that the height out here is going to be different right. so I mean without standing at those locations and and paying really close attention I'd, I'd be hesitant to so that end is going to be higher this end of the building is going to be higher than it is right now just, just as a point of clarification, where this has to go to the planning board, the planning board is going to have to look at, again, the height of the building, the configuration <coughs> of the building, plus there are references to view corridors in our ordinance. Those all fall under planning board review. That's something, unfortunately, this board really doesn't have any regulatory that. powers on. I just wanted to make sure that was, that was clear just to save some confusion going forward. Um, Mary Jo, just for the record, could you state your name, please? She did. She did. She did. Yes. Oh, I'm sorry. I missed it. Sorry. Um, Allison McKellar, Cam Dent, 79 Mechanic Street. Um, and just to clarify, are there two rounds of public questions? So this is the question phase, and then there would be the maybe comment phase second is that okay so um, I guess what I'm curious about is w the current foundation of that building um, when I look there it looks I mean it's a really kind of special part of the harbor because so much of our harbor we've taken and walled off we have filled in the intertidal zone we've eliminated tons of habitat 
over on that side of the harbor is some of the only area that is not walled off. It's not concrete. There's that back and forth. And it looks, standing today at the, I, know, I guess it's the east or the side that's closest to the library, um, it looks like there's not much of a foundation on that side. Or how, what, what is underneath there? You're talking on, and the east is on the parking lot side. No, it's the so west. you're talking yeah. on, on this side. It's all pile supported. Okay. So it's just, if you, if you go under there, it's just a whole bunch of piles, like 12, 8 to 12 inch diameter piles. Okay. And on top of those are pile caps and then framing. Mm -hmm. And a whole bunch of cross bracing. And is there a, con a what kind of floor is there when? It's wood, a wood floor to the building. Okay. So the first floor is all, actually the whole building is all wood. Yep. And, and the new building will be wood constructed too. The only portion that'll be potentially concrete would be um, a wall on this side, replacing an existing concrete. Actually, what's that wall made out of timber? Some of it's timbers and stone. Mm -hmm. um, mm -hmm. And so. this side, the ground is actually up against the building, so we need to solve right. that problem. But this portion right here will How are you going to solve that problem? By raise it up? Which fixing the grades and, and um, just pouring a concrete wall there so that the fill is up against concrete, not wood. Mm. But okay. this is still going to be pile supported. Okay. The other option we've looked at, to be honest, and, and we haven't gotten there yet, and, and part of it is a little bit of a chicken and the egg, right? If, if this process with the zoning board doesn't get us what we want, mm -hmm. then we don't want to have gone too far down a road with finalizing design of architectural and structural plans for this. So the next step after this is for us to work with these guys and the architects to figure out what is the best way to support this. And so out here will definitely be either pile supported. We talked a little bit about maybe granite, similar to what you'd see on a pier. Um, uh, like the seawall? Not like a wall, but stacked granite, uh, like a, a pier of granite. Cribbed. A cribbed. Cribbed, cribbed yeah. granite. Right. So you'd have pieces that would stack up until they supported the building. Um, it's just kind of a neat look. It's permanent. You don't have to replace them. Putting piles under the building eventually, there's going to be work that's going to need to be done to replace them or repair them, which isn't mm -hmm. easy. So we're looking at a bunch of different options. But whatever we do out here is going to be open. It's not going to be a solid wall, if that's what you're asking. Yes. Yep. And a lot of that is, is we've got to minimize the impact below high water. So we've got to go through both the DEP and the Army Corps of Engineers. And they're going to be looking for us to minimize our impact there. So we have some impact there now. If whatever we do increases that impact, they're going to scrutinize it. And can you expand a little bit on the, the gap that you were talking about between the building and the... Yeah, I don't know if I took uh, a picture of that. I, I, I wasn't thinking the gap was going to be... I can't picture it in my interest, mind right now. But the gap sounds like good habitat, possibly, I guess. Oh, not, no, not this one. Not this one. <laughs> it's, if, the, if this is the side of the building, yeah. there's a retaining wall about maybe a foot away from it. Uh -huh. And so there's this just little space between the wall and the building that stuff gets down into, and then it goes under the building. So have you mm -hmm. been inside this, Allison? I haven't. No. You come see it. Yeah, I, I mean, it up pretty yeah, good. that that yeah. and that gap um, is just a little. Is that space. the gap? Is I think that's the gap. Will you show it to Will and see if he? <laughs> No no, no, no. That's we're talking right that's here. That's the part I'm concerned about. But there's a retaining wall here. So on the other no, side, I think you're talking side. about. Oh, okay. Sorry. No, that's all right. It's on this side, and there's a retaining wall that holds back the parking lot, mm -hmm. and then the building sits a foot away from it, and so there's a, a, a space there between the wall and the building, that is just a hazard. Full of I mean, muck. You think of adding? Well, muck is. I mean. I, no, 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 not the muck it, you like. No. Like, like <laughs> this is bad I don't know. <laughs> no. I mean, you yeah, you need to see it. it. It's, yeah. it's okay. It's not something. That you don't want your kids to laying in there. We're much, <laughs> it makes much more sense for us to close that one foot gap. With concrete, on, on, is that what you're saying? Or? No, there's a wall there now. So okay. we're going to put a new wall back and we're going to put the building on it. And we're mm -hmm. going to gain space on this side. This side, it's much more valuable to gain space than that little gap between the existing retaining wall and the building where there's nothing but sand and salt and 
garbage that falls in there. Sand and the salt and all that is actually a positive. Oh, thing. No, no, no. I'll, I'll, I'll wait to comment on it. Until, it's it's, it's um, sand and salt that comes off the driveway from being sanded and salted uh, in the wind. It's not, it's not That's good. not okay. good. This is not a no. habitat for like. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Um, this this space here is not good. That's why we moved it this way. Collapsing. We eliminate yeah. that. I was say, and we put the habitat back. Yeah. yeah. Which okay. is in the water, close to the water. Okay. And it's that more natural. I like that. Yeah. This doesn't. Yeah. And have you have you considered any other kinds of options for the retaining wall there? You can see in all these places all over the country, they're changing their seawalls so that they're more of like a. You won't see that, Allison. You're not, I'm, it's I'm not concerned be a, about seeing it. I'm concerned about so this part along here. That's that wooden. But we won't get into no. That's all bricked. That's all rock. There, right. So that's all been done by Wayfair in the past. Which is all. And that's going to stay, right? That's right. all staying. staying. You're not even going to. Nobody's even going to know that's there. No, what's what's already a retaining wall. It'll be safer for sure. Yeah. yeah. Right. So you're going to shift the so building the over on top of that. Right. Uh, it's actually going to go right the, uh, under the building. Foundation. It's right. going to support that side of the building. The new retaining and wall. And right. Support the and support the parking lot. So there's an elevation change here. Underneath here is lower. Mm -hmm. This is high and this is low, and so that wall, that foundation wall for the building, is also going to be the retaining wall to hold back the earth that supports the parking. So when we first moved in, Allison, we that was all washed out. We had to rebuild all this, so all that was just mm -hmm. getting washed out. So if it's washed out, that I mean that does mean that's the intertidal zone that's going no, in and out. And no, mm -mm. absolutely not. No. It's coming from above. It was washing yeah. out from stormwater okay. that runs it's down the driveway. Problem. Big safety problem. Okay. And now, did you look at all at the idea of turning the building? I mean, I understand that that's not going to be the popular thing. Everybody is going to want the, you know, the building. There's a, we're no longer allowed to build buildings where this one is because <laughs> of the environmental impact. So, um, but it's a popular thing, and of course, everybody's going to want to be right there. But you mean turning it you, this way? Right. Well, the problem is we, there's a massive culvert right here. This is where the stream comes underneath Atlantic and dumps right. into the channel. So we don't want to be right. No, I wouldn't want to go in the stream, but the. Right, well, that's that's right. The, the stream channel is right there. So there's no room to do that. And you'd have to move it back to to, the, you know, toward Up the into parking. Here? Yep. Well, then that would cut off access down in here, which there's a, a drive that comes all the way down here. And this is where the easement is for the sewer. Yeah. So what about like. And, and does it need to be the same, since some of the use is changing, does it, is there any reason that it needs to be that same rect, long rectangular? Put our stuff there, yeah, for sure. For the dinghies and what we got there now. Okay. Yeah, it's good, it's good shops. I, I'm, I'm sorry, I couldn't hear you, what, your response. You said, good shop space for the, for the yard, so that's important. That it's a long rectangle? Oh, yeah. yeah, yeah. So what, is, what, what happens there now? You should come over. You come over. And I, see I would it. love I to, but but I think that I'm. But I think the decision is going to get me today. So I'm just trying well, to. Well, today's decision is just yeah. whether or not it can go back where it is, right? That's yeah, the, I guess that's yeah, what that's I'm. The, that's why I'm asking. It's a much safer what they're doing. They're going to stop the groundwater from washing all the soils into the harbor. I have no water. doubt that the human benefits are numerous. Even um, the fish benefits are going to be better, because it's a retaining wall <laughs> that's holding back the soils. This, you know, because that, that um, uh, tile wall, that uh, railroad tile wall has been there when I was a kid. I remember it being there. I guess so I'm talking more about really pursuing options for, for moving it farther away from. Well, if you move the it, and you're going to get That's into what Will this. stated earlier, you're going to get into elevations. You're going to probably get into some views from some of the other houses because uh, the building will come up when it, as you well, move that, it up that yeah, hill. That's the, other, that's the other issue we have is that the grade climbs so fast here. I mean, these, each one of these lines represents a foot in elevation change. So there's a lot of grade change right through here. It's really steep. In fact, these parking spaces mm -hmm. are, you know, the type where you open your car door and it's, it comes back on you. So it would, it, would, it would be really difficult to build it here, but it would also mean we would have to raise it even more just to, e just to get the 24-foot elevation that we would be allowed. There's also setbacks from Atlantic Ave that we would potentially be in violation of. Um, what are the, have you looked into what the actual requirements are for the setback from Atlantic Ave and that wall there? 
you know, what the minimum space is that you actually do I, need. I didn't pay close attention to it because we weren't getting any closer to Atlantic Ave. In fact, we're eliminating a piece of the building that's closer to Atlantic Ave. I mean, right now we're only 26 feet from Atlantic Ave, which is pretty close for a building that size. We really wouldn't want to be any closer to that, and we don't want to undermine that existing granite wall there. So we really don't want to do any digging. Close we're talking about being close to Atlantic Ave versus close to the shoreland, which is, I mean, that's, I, if I understand it correctly, the reason that we do this entire process here is. No, this process right here is, is, is moving it back to the greatest practical extent. Right. And so that's, I guess, it seems like I, 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 and I definitely see what you're saying with all of the different elevation issues, but the most practical like, possibility for moving it back would just be, you know, possibly 10 feet closer to Atlantic Ave. And I'm just curious what the... Well, that would mean that within 15 feet of Atlantic Ave, we'd be excavating adjacent to that granite wall that supports Atlantic Ave. And that granite wall is... Um, about 10 feet tall. So, I mean, it could. How much excavating do you anticipate? Do, do you, what kind of a foundation is. Well, at this end of the building, we, we want to put a, a concrete foundation there because of those grades. So, we, this part, we don't want to be pile supported because it's right in the ground. And we can't lift it up because we'd be making it worse for the neighbors, and the ordinance doesn't allow us to lift it up. So there's a lot of pieces. So it is adding a new concrete foundation that doesn't currently exist. Correct. So, okay. Probably an argument to be made that there's, that creates a larger impact than currently exists. But, I mean, my main concern is, is the habitat part of it. And so I think there are lots of opportunities for there to be improvement and it might not be with where the building is, but saying, okay, well, we're going to do this, and we understand that this has an impact, but let's try to, you know, find a way to make it up somewhere else, I guess is what I'm trying to. We're, we're probably going to have a, a better impact for what you're looking for, for the new building than what's there now. It's going to be cleaner. You've got to come see this, like. Mm -hmm. It's hard to have the egress and ingress of water underneath that. I mean, I, I, I too see opportunities for improvement. I just want to make sure that it's not very often that we do rebuild structures that are, that are right here in this really important thriving zone that used to be an intertidal mud flat with many, many species of, you know, animals that are no longer able to access that. And so every time that, you know, as a community, every time that we look at doing something different, we should just make sure that we're reclaiming as much, um, you know, that the animals and nature is reclaiming as much as possible um, without, we're not so. Age. I mean, we're not going to come in there and drop oil drums in there and put a gas pump right, right. there. Right. So, yeah. I mean, I know that I've learned a lot. Like, I think of myself as being environmental, but I've made lots of decisions in the past just from not knowing the types of little animals um, that can, I mean, would you consider having an organization like Maine Audubon or the Nature Conservancy just weigh in on like little opportunities for habitat improvement that might, we, you know, we might not know exist. Like maybe there's a little shrub, a certain kind of shrub you can plant right along yeah, there be, that. We should talk about this after. Yeah, why don't you come see me and we'll, we'll go okay. through it. Because okay. we're, we're into that stuff too, yeah. Alison. That's, I, and I know you are. Yeah, yeah, um, yeah. It's, I'm, not, I'm not asking these questions to be like yeah, yeah. adversarial. It's no, just, no, right on, um, yeah. No, that'd be a good conversation. I, yeah. we'll, we'll meet up after this. Perfect. Thank you. <laughs> Maybe not in the rain. <laughs> <laughs> Did you have well, I just wanted to say, I think Will pointed out, too, that, that, that we're going through a Army Corps plus the uh, DP yeah. reviews, and they're going to be watching yeah. you. Mm -hmm. And so I think that those, those that criteria would be met. Well, and part of those applications, um, when they go to the DEP and the Army Corps, they go to the um, Department of Marine Resources and, and uh, National Fisheries, and so there's a lot of people that will get a look at this. And as far as the mud flaps, they're going to be still the same as they are now because the building's going to be on posts or right. piers or whatever. 
yeah, but it's not on a foundation right. in the water, so it'll be fine. Okay. I'll say anybody else. Any more comments from uh, the audience? No more comments from the audience. Then at this time, uh, we will close the public hearing and the board will deliberate. Here. Don't we have a second opportunity, the board? Actually, we do. We have a second second opportunity. Mm -hmm. and the public does too, public I think, does right? Too. Yeah. So may I ask a question? Sure. sure. Um, it's related in a way to what Allison was getting at, but it's coming from a different direction. To what extent, either in our, for this board or for the other groups that you mentioned, is sea rise and climate change um, likely to be raised? And to what extent have you all taken that into account? Because it's, I don't have any doubt that it's coming. We're in the same way. And you're right there on the water, so you have more at stake um, yep. than we do. But I'm thinking of surges, too. I mean, I have family members down in the south who um, yeah. thought the same things. Yeah, right, right. No, we're, no, honestly, across all our property on the water there, that's a big, big focus for us right now. Okay. It just would be nice to hear something specific in response to that. It, it actually will come up both in the planning and the code review because I have to look at it through FEMA's coastal construction. Yeah. We've got to meet all their criteria. We did just within the last five years, they adopted new flood zones, which raised everything elevation wise by three quarters of a foot. Yeah. And the new flood elevation for this particular area of the harbor is right now at 11 feet. And they have to be one foot above that to the lowest floor. So, I mean, they still got a lot of things we've got to address. So one final thing, again, to pick up on what Allison said, when you are, and back to my concern about vegetation, when you are doing the revegetating, um, to think about some of the habitat questions so that it's not just about what's customary for residences or businesses, but might actually help um, some of the rest of the creatures. Any more, any more general comments from the public? I just put out one question about sure. color. Bright pink, Allison. We can just, you can just stop there. Right <laughs> Mud <laughs> brown. Oh. Mud <laughs> brown. What are we? Uh, <laughs> so I often joke about how we're soon going to have to uh, change our town seal. Um, you can see it's been, you know, sort of going, going, gone with the red sheds <coughs> and, um, you know, the other, I'm at the liaison to the Historic Resources Committee and um, I care a lot less about the aesthetic part than I do about the habitat part, but I, you know, there's, the red is nice. What color? Our buildings on the seal, aren't they? Yeah. Well, well used to one, be. Of one of them, of them's gone. Yeah. I feel like a few of them are gone. Yeah. Actually, like a lot. There, there's one left. This is the last one. Yeah. yeah. Um, what color are you thinking? What color do you want? <laughs> I imagine that the community would have a, a preference for that red color. I think it's... Yeah, that would be ours. Yeah. yeah, that is what we've been talking about. We're probably not going to have white roofs, but we, the buildings will be red. Maybe some solar panels on the roofs. Yeah, now you're talking. <laughs> we'll talk all about that later. Okay. Yeah, we're going to hit you guys up with a select board for that. Yeah. Perfect. You don't need an ordinance change or anything for that, do you? <laughs> I don't know. I don't or would so. make them like a little bit higher? Yeah. Maybe we could come. We'll talk. Next. We have lots to talk about. All right. <laughs> Thank you. As long as you're below the peak, you're okay. Yeah. Any any further comments from the public? <coughs> All right. I guess then uh, <coughs> we will 
close the public hearing again. I make a motion to close for public okay. hearing. Second. So the motion's been made and seconded to close the public hearing. Any further comment on that? All in favor? Now we go down through the questions here. <coughs> In making our decision, it looks like that Section 6 changes in non conforming structure in the shoreland area. As the applicant has, has uh, presented here, um, the first item here, within the setback, a non-conforming structure may be modified under the following circumstances. Expansion is number one. Um, and as they've stated, that's not applicable because you're not expanding the, the building footprint. You're reducing In fact, footprint. you're reducing it. So when you reduce it, are you are you making it smaller in footprint or just how, how are you reducing that? So if you look on the site plan, we've got a, there's a heavy gas ground line. And you can see there's a bump out from the north end that's going away. And then on the uh, west side, um, those circles okay. represent LP okay. tank. So that heavy dashed line is where this entire existing, building is That's now. existing right, right now, okay. What we're showing, <coughs> um, in gray is deck, and then everything in brown is new building. Okay. So the, the portion of it that's actual solid building with walls and roof is considerably less, um, but there is deck there that takes up part of that. Yeah. So you're, you're, you're reducing it in, in width right. uh, on the west side? Correct. Those bump outs there are cantilevered. Okay. So, they, so you're, you're off the ground, above the ground. So that straight line on the brown there is, that's all will be down. Right. And so that'll reduce our overall impact too because, we, because the footprint is a little less and the deck and those bump outs are cantilevered, we have a, a lot less area that's going to have piles. So we should be able to reduce the overall number of piles and the impact from the piles. So are we ready to sign on the different criteria or are we just going through the questions? Well, I was just going through the questions. Mm -hmm. Okay, so of, uh, you know, these, is that, is that what you're going through? Well, this is what was on the back. This is what we're supposed to, right, process. questions that are supposed to pertain to this particular you. case, correct? Yeah. Sections. So just the first one is to determine that it is, <coughs> that it is within the 100 feet and it does meet in the preview of the um, CBA, correct? Mm -hmm. That would be the first question, in which it does. You need a copy. Yeah, I've got it here somewhere. I've got too many papers. Yeah, just this one here? Yeah. Flip it over. No, that's, that's the wrong one. This is? We'll see, we'll no, see I've got the wrong one. one. Oh, you got the wrong one. Uh, okay. Then take mine. <laughs> Thank you, Ron. So we say that it is within the purview of the board of the ZBA, and it is within the 100-foot shoreland zone. You want to make a motion to that, John? We have to vote on that each way, all the way through. I'll make a motion then yeah. to define that the building is within the 100-foot setback and it does meet the um, um, pre purview of the Zoning Board of Appeals as a non-conforming structure in the Shoreland Zone under Article 5.6, 6.6. Those in favor? I mean, any discussion, those in favor? <laughs> Next, we're going to go to section 6 2. Foundation. I sue application. <coughs> 2. I like this book. It's well laid out. 
Thank you. Foundation piece. Sure. Yeah. Go ahead. All right. Foundations. Whenever a new, enlarged or replacement foundation is constructed under a non-conforming structure, the structure in our new foundation must be placed such that the setback requirement is met at the greatest practical extent, as determined by the Zoning Board of Appeals or as designee, basing its decision on the criteria specified in sections 3A and B relocation law below. I think they met that, showing that it's in the best place it can be. You can't get there yet. No. No, no. sorry. Jumping the gun. <laughs> I mean, they might wish you did, but you got to find a few facts first. Yeah. You have to find that it this applies. Right. Well, then we can say it does apply, right? Second. There you go. Thank you. So we need all those in favor of type thing. All those in favor of your motion, you mean? Well, no, well, well, yeah. well, yeah. Yes. Okay. Yeah. Okay. And on section C3. Is that location? Relocation. Re the relevant sections are on <coughs> that sheet that Jeannie gave you for. Say again, I'm uh, sorry. Performance too. They're right, right, right on there. Here. Yeah. Right. So in determining the proposed location, the building meets the setback to the greatest practical extent. The Zoning Board of Appeals will consider the items listed below to determine whether or not the, the cottage can be relocated to a site on the lot that will be less non-conforming with regard to the setback and site proposed by the applicant. The applicant will have submitted information to address these conditions in their packet. You will have the evidence as well as testimony to rely on to make motions containing specific findings on the following items. The size of the lot. Um, I think Will has demonstrated that the size of the lot, if, if, if it really dictates where that building is now and where the new building, the limitations for a new building, um, the slope of the land has been addressed in an upward grade towards the Atlantic Avenue retaining wall being a constricting factor in uh, trying to move the building back or, or turn it left or right. Potential for soil erosion. Um, They're doing these walls so it's certainly going to help right. control that. Um, I think there's been some demonstration that potential for soil erosion will be improved here with the new concrete, with the removal of the existing retaining wall and a new concrete retaining wall acting as a foundation should, should help that situation. Location of other structures on the property. Uh, I don't think there are any other structures on the property. Uh, just, just for clarification, um, and in the shoreland zone, basically the parking area are structures, the other buildings are structures. All, right. All of those issues do lend to the fact that moving that building would be dis a lot more disruptive. Disruptive, yeah. Right. No subject because it's all sore there, right? Yes. Right. Vegetation to be removed. Is there any vegetation? Just, that, just not other not. than yeah. other than what's right on the just a little bit of grass side. around the north and west side of the building. That's actually going to increase. Yeah. yeah. You ready to make a motion? Ready now? for your motion, John. <laughs> Which part do you want me to start with now? We're going to, I mean, they. we start at the top, or we want to start with the uh, size of the lot? Let's go and say that they. Combine them. I think you actually, that's at, that's at your, I mean, you've pretty well discussed them. Yeah. If you wanted to combine them under one motion, you're free well, to I do that. Well, I certainly feel, I feel that 
Well, Morris has demonstrated they've, they've, they've put the bill in the best, most practical way. They're doing all the um, soil erosion that they need to do to control the uh, runoffs from the uh, upper, upper levels, which seems to be the biggest problem. They're addressing the um, um, the uh, shore impact by the doing with the pylons versus putting this in some, uh, wall in there. There is no, uh, they can't move the building in either way because of the structures, the retaining wall, and the underground utilities that are located on the land. And then um, there is no septic because it's all down sewer. And as far as the vegetation goes, they're, they're show, demonstrating that there's going to be improvement. And that also will come under review for the planning board as it goes down the line, correct? Mm -hmm. So is that a good motion that way? That would be a great motion. And once it's seconded, if anyone doesn't agree. It's all of the, it's all the highlights there. Right. And, and I second your motion. Thank you. Did you get all that, Jeannie? <laughs> at that point in time, if anybody on the board doesn't agree, you can separate them out now that you can discuss it. Any, any further discussion on John's, John's uh, motion? Those in favor? One more. So now we've got to make our, our final motion to approve or disapprove the application. Pretty much what I just said. Pretty much that's what you just said. I know. I mean, we found all the findings of fact and that it met the criteria that we needed to do. And, and, and now you can just do a simple. Well, I, I, I got a question. We yes, saw the, uh, the changes. Uh, uh, and not it changes in use. Now it's it's in it's in the proposal here. Technically, this board only would have, effect, have, an, sure. have an effect on that change if it was changing from a non-conforming use to another non-conforming non use. use. Okay, so we'll you make can, sure. Anytime they can change from a non-conforming use or add a conforming use, mm -hmm. that's not anything that was required. And and this this here. this application will now go from here to the planning board, board which will review the. Yes. The conditions of the residential use. If you mm -hmm. want to address the use change, you can just say that you find that the change of use conforms to the permitted uses in the district or something. If you okay. want to. Mm -hmm. yeah. sure. okay. So I'll make that motion. Go that, right ahead. That, that the yeah. use, proposed use is, meets the uh, guidelines of, this, of the, uh, the zone, zone that it's located. located in. Mm -hmm. Second. Okay. Any discussion on that? Those in favor? Is it possible? Um, you're going to love this for me again, but can I add um, a condition? That's what Jeannie's Between crib sheet. All of you on the board. Yeah, yeah. You, as long as it's condition the simply about the um, consulting uh, about the plantings to come up with plantings that are environmentally helpful. That would have to be. A voluntary request, I think, because we don't cover that in our ordinance. We can only put conditions on that. That are based on the ordinance. Okay. But the planning board could do that. The Correct? planning board you can, can recommend to them that they yeah. consider that. Okay. Well, they've already demonstrated that, that they were willing to, to do what they needed to do to make yeah. it right. I'm taking about that word. I think that's something for the brown tail moss is what I'm thinking. <laughs> <laughs> Some fruit trees. <laughs> something, something that's you some trees apple down trees there. all around. Something that eats them. <laughs> yeah. Exactly. All right. So what's next? Just the final so, motion? Yeah, basically. Ron, Ron proposed, did you vote on We gotta vote on Ron's. We did. We did. Did you yeah, vote on it? Okay. We did a second, but did we vote okay. on it? Yes, we did. Yeah, we did. Okay. We voted that. Okay. Yeah. I guess I missed that one. Now the approval. Now the final. The final yes or no. Based on the findings, I believe the project meets all the criteria and uh, we should approve. Is that simple enough? Second. Any further discussion on the final motion to approve this application? Those in favor? The application is approved. Thank you very much. Thank you. You want to keep these keep these drawings for future yeah. use, sir? Please. It's going to be different. Nice drawings as usual. This is not actual final.
until. Um, just one one bit of uh, information, if I could, before we, everybody leaves, just so you guys are aware of it. Um, in light of the Camden Harbor Inn decision a number of years back, yeah. we just wanted to make sure you were aware that technically under the law court's decision, the appeal period for this approval will not begin until the time you've gone through the planning board and got all your approvals sir. I just wanted to make sure that's on the record and you guys were aware of it. What is it, 30, 30 days after the planning board approval? Yeah. And then the planning board can be appealed to? The planning board can be appealed at the same time as the zoning board. Okay. You might, if that somebody wanted to appeal your decision, they have to wait. Well, yeah, yeah, two you, separate. You could do two separate ones, but neither one can start until all the approvals are issued. <laughs> I don't think we've had a motion to adjourn yet. No, I don't think they have to. Uh, do they? they usually do. I move we adjourn. All in favor, quick, raise your hand so everybody at home can see it. Okay, thank you. Thank you. <laughs>